According to my retirement certificate, I served 44 years, two months, and eight days up to the retirement date, and including my retirement years to the present, I have been an officer 59 years, plus some months and plus some days. I haven't calculated that one yet. While my appointments have been varied throughout my officership, uh, I've often described them as having multiple careers within a career. I have served in Corps as Corps Officer in the Salvation Army Correctional Services Department where I was prison chaplain, court worker, probation officer, and parole officer. I had a four-year appointment as Administrator Executive Director of the Seniors Eventide Home in Montreal. Several appointments were served in divisional headquarters in three divisions, Quebec twice, as DYS, Divisional Finance Secretary, Coordinator of French Ministries, City Commander for Quebec City, Divisional Secretary, Divisional Commander, having retired following 14 years in this role. This is a difficult question to answer as within each appointment there has been experiences that often come to mind. I enjoyed very much my experiences in working with youth and training leaders for their ministry to youth and young adults and teenagers. Perhaps some of my more vivid stories and highlights come from the years I served in prison ministry and work in the criminal courts. I soon learned after commencing my appointment in this field that the most difficult and perhaps largest mission field anywhere is found within our prisons. Uh, before retiring in 2007, I had a call to visit someone who was in the emergency ward of the hospital in Chattagay. He was someone who I had had contact through the court system named Sonny and was quite agitated as he lay in the hospital bed in the emergency ward. The story is very vivid in my mind. In the course of conversation, I asked him if he would like to give his life to Jesus, to accept Jesus into his life. He said he would, but did not know how to pray to this end. I told him that I could coach him by saying a prayer that he could repeat after me and to this he consented. After we prayed and he asked Jesus to save him and be his savior, he was much more relaxed, saying that he felt much better and at peace. And that was quite obvious. The next day I got a call telling me that Sonny had passed away the previous night within hours of my visit with him. At the funeral parlor, Marilyn and I met a young girl who was quite upset, and we found out and discovered it was Sonny's daughter. She had been separated for several years from her father and told us she was a Christian and was sad because her dad had died, not knowing the Lord. I told her the story of his deathbed conversion, and she was then at ease. A great memory. Now, this to me perhaps is the most important question. Uh, I could elaborate on this for a long time as it requires probably more than can be said in a short interview. But I will briefly summarize. With each summary, there is a story for another time. As I look back into my life of officership, I can recount several incidents or experiences that in my view and understanding formed through the years was all related to my calling. As a child of eight, I was influenced by the preaching and passion of one of our officers in Amherst, Nova Scotia, where I was brought up. I wanted to be an officer like him, and in later years, continued to be haunted by the desire to be an officer. 
Uh, despite trying several trades, I had to come back to what I was then understanding, God calling me. An incident in Montreal's Skid Row District brought me again back to the point that I could do no other but to surrender my life to God in full-time service and thus commence the path to becoming an officer in the Salvation Army. I can say that to me, to be an officer had to be a special and direct call from the Lord to serve. A call that to me is compelling, it's convincing, and it's convicting. I have felt the urge and desire with, in recent years to want to do a campaign across the territory to speak about service to God as an officer and to be able to speak with youth and young adults about this. Uh, as an 80 year old, I would not want to talk about the past as if that is where I'm living, but rather talk about the relevance and reality that today, 2022, God still calls people to serve Him, calling Christians to follow Him and to become devoted to Him. For some of this following will become a calling to serve as an officer, listening to the voices of need around that compel to serve in this capacity. I would say to anyone contemplating this move in their lives, to be sure they are listening to God's voice speaking and calling them, and to counsel that they are not embarking simply upon a career, but that they, in spiritual obedience, are obeying a calling that will lead them into unknown territory, but will be led by God who calls them to serve. That's it, simply submitting yourselves to serve God who calls and provides through suffering humanity. Uh, perhaps I would add that as an officer, they move into a world ministering in the name of the great physician to bring healing and grace to the wounded of society and to help prepare people to not only live changed lives here on earth, but to prepare people for eternal life with the Lord.